I found this nice demo by Jay on Twitter. If you don't know Jay, Jay creates a lot of amazing CSS demos. And when I see his demos, I try to replicate them also. So you can see this nice, what do you want to call it? Animated toggler or tab switcher. I try to do it myself and I achieve this. His animations are probably much more smoother than mine, but <laughs> this works. Now, when I finished this, I compared my code with Jay's code and I found a couple of similarities. First, he was using the Hasudo class. I was using the Hasudo class also. Hasudo class is very useful for achieving something like this. He was using the end of type pseudo class and I was using the end of child pseudo class. They're kind of similar too, but they work in different ways. He was using custom properties and I was using custom properties a lot. Also, I used JavaScript to achieve the switching between the tabs, but he didn't use any JavaScript. He used the checked pseudo class of input element. And that was also pretty cool. I have a video where I show amazing things you can do with a checked pseudo class without involving any JavaScript. I'll link that video below. But anyways, let me show you how I was able to achieve this. Let's start from a clean slate like this. For the code, I have some JavaScript here. This is doing the switching. We'll look at what the JavaScript is doing in a second. So I have my first div, ID first tabs, class tabs, and this has three buttons. Currently, the second button has an active class. Then I have this other div called second tabs. This one has only two tabs, and the first tab has the active class. For my style, I've done some pretty basic and default here but now coming to these tabs the first thing I want to do is to apply display of grid now you can probably use different solutions here to achieve the layout that you want but this video is not to say if you want to achieve this do like this but just to teach you a couple of CSS tricks so display of grid and then I can do grid templates columns repeat and then I'm going to have three columns for now but I'll show you how to get dynamic columns now what you usually do do is repeat 31fr but repeat 31fr is not the most accurate way to have the same size of columns i have a video where i dive into a deep explanation on that i'll link it below so what i usually do now is min max then i have zero as the min and one fr as the max and now when i have this items spaced like this the one problem now is that this one is wide for the three items, which is valid, but this one is wide when it contains only two items. And to fix that, this is why I used the has pseudo class and end of child. The has pseudo class is pretty powerful because it allows you to style a selector when that selector has another selector. So here I can say if tabs has, and then I can mix this with other pseudo classes like the end of child. So I can say if it has tab with end of child one, then I'm going to add a custom property here, which I call count just to go over this line again. I'll also link a video on the has studio class in the video description if you want to learn more about it. But if tabs, this is tabs, has a tab class which is a first child then apply this so that means this tabs has this tab here as the first child it's going to apply this and i'm going to repeat this like four times now if you're using something like javascript or a framework you would be able to do this dynamically without repeating yourself but we're not using any framework here so we're doing a bit of work for end child of two i have count of two for end child of three i have count of three for end child of four i have count of Four. I can take this up here and now when I'm doing this repeat instead of putting a hard coded value like three I can now put the custom property count so if we have only one tab the count will be one if we have four tabs the count will be four and now if I come here as I refresh you see that we now have three columns for the first one and we have two columns for the second one now for the width I'm going to do a max width and in this max width I'm going to do some calculation let me just have a custom property here here, which is going to be the size of one tab, the width of one tab. So let's say the maximum width of one tab is 130 pixels. Here we can now do a calculation where we say that this tab multiplied by the count. So if we have just one tab with a count of one, it means the maximum width of these tabs is going to be 130 pixels. But if we have three tabs, which we do in the first case, then this is going to be three times 130 pixels. I should probably give this a better name like tab width because just saying tab doesn't help. And now if I do this by applying that max width, you can now see that this is going to be 130 times three. This is going to be 130 times two. I probably want to make this bigger so that there is much space. Okay. This 
is now going to be 150 times 3, 150 times 2. Moving on, here we have this active class, so we want to style it. We're still going to use the has pseudo class again because if you remember from here, you can see that this stuff here is translating from one point to another. One way you can achieve this is to manage this animated stuff from the tabs. So instead of creating this animated stuff on the tab itself, you want to create it on the tabs since the tabs is a parent of the tab. That is, the tabs is a parent of each of these tabs. So here I'm going to use the after pseudo element. I have a video on the before and after pseudo element. You can check it out where I dive into more detail. So on this after pseudo element, I'm going to have an empty content because this is just for visual purposes. Then I'll have a position of relative so that I can serve as a boundary for this pseudo element. Then I can have a position of absolute. Here I can have inset of zero. Inset is just shorthand for top, right, bottom, and left left just the way you have margin for margin top margin right margin bottom margin left now instead of coming here and then putting a width of this tab width if you remember this tab width is 150 pixels now if you do it like this this is going to work but when you reduce your screen, then this is going to stay at 150 pixels. That is not what we want. So instead, what we're going to do here is we're going to do another calculation where we say that 100% divide by the number of tabs that we have. Again, we could use this tab with custom property, but if we do that, when the sizes of tabs change, remember we're specifying this as a max width. So that size can reduce if there is no space. This is not going to stay at 150 pixels anymore. It might probably go as low as 100 pixels. Pixels, but because this is hard coded as 150 pixels, this will be longer. So instead, we're going to do a calculation of 100% divided by the number of tabs that we have. Then I can give this a uh, background color. I'm just going to give it a light gray. Then another thing I want to do here is to apply a border radius of inherit so that I can inherit the border radius from these tabs. Now that we have this, if I should refresh, you can now see we have that after pseudo element here but then it's covering our text and we don't want that but if i come here and i put a z index of minus one that after pseudo element would go to the back of tabs that is going to the back of tabs and we can verify that if i should apply a background color of transparent you can see that it's at the back of the tabs element but that is not what we want so i'm going to isolate this by doing isolation isolate by doing this if i specify a minus one here because this is isolated in the tabs it cannot go outside the tab and if i should refresh this you see that the after pseudo element is behind the text but it doesn't go behind the tabs moving on the active class is currently on CSS here, right? And the active class is currently on HTML here. So let's move this to the active ones. To achieve that, you can use the transform translate or other properties for positioning your element. I'm just going to use margin left for this. So I'm going to say margin left. And now how do I tell this after pseudo element how much it should move? Well, this is I'm going to use another set of custom properties. So here I did this has pseudo class and ends child to get the number of tabs that we have, right? But another thing I want to do now is I want to know what the active tab is you could use javascript for this if you wanted but i'm going to stick with css so i'm going to say tabs use the has pseudo class again then i have tab and i'm going to say when a tab is active and it is the first child then we're going to say that the active is zero i'm starting the index here from zero for easy calculation then i'm going to repeat this same idea for two three four so if tabs has a tab with an active class that is the first child then active is zero if tabs has a tab with active class and it's the third child then the active should be three now that we have this we can now come to this margin left and we can say that or before we do that we're going to apply this to a custom property i really like custom properties just the way you use variables in javascript and other programming languages that same concept applies here it allows you to reuse values a lot so i can have a width custom property and i'm going to put all of this here and i'm going to show you why i'm doing this so i can use the width here and now that i have the width here i can now do my margin left by saying calculation first i'm going to get the active multiplied by the width so if the active is zero zero multiplied by the width is going to be zero so the margin left is going to be zero if the active is one then one times the width is going to be how much space the after pseudo element needs to move from the left and now if i should come and refresh this okay this isn't working the way i expected it to work right what's going wrong here 
yeah i found what's going wrong instead of saying zero one two three i did zero two three four that's why <laughs> so let's go zero one two three and now if i should refresh okay great we now have this that's working fine now let's go to our javascript so what my javascript is doing here is basically moving the active class from one element to another so first i get the first tabs by using document get element by id i get the second tabs then i get the first tab element instead of doing documents dot query selector all because if i do this it's going to select all the tabs in the documents so instead i do first tabs dot query selector all so that way it's going to get only the tab classes that are in first tabs and i get also for second tabs and i have this function which i call handle active switch it takes the tab elements it loops through all the tab elements and on each tab element it adds an event listener of click when you click on a tab what it does is that it will then again loop through every tab to remove the active class from any tab that has the active class and then here it adds the active class on this element that was clicked there are probably other ways you can do this especially with frameworks but let's just stick to vanilla javascript so now i do handle active switch for the first tab element and handle active switch for the second tab element so this way when you click on html the active class is removed from css and added to html same thing here same thing here same thing here and same thing here okay now let's add some animations so that the element is not just jumping from one to another so where i applied my margin left which is here i'm just going to apply a transition for margin left and i'm going to put these at 300 milliseconds and if i should come here now it transitions here it transitions here it transitions here same thing same thing let me make this one second you shouldn't be doing this because it's going to make things kind of slow anyways let's go back to 300 milliseconds okay now we're almost done the only thing that's left is that the pseudo element should not be touching the edges but in our case the pseudo element is touching the edges so how do you fix this now while i was experimenting i thought i could just do inset of five pixels so that's going to be top five pixels right five pixels bottom five pixels and left five pixels but if you do that it's going to look like it's working but it's not very accurate for example look at this html it has those space at the edges right css you cannot tell for the left and the right but the top and bottom has those spaces but if you go to javascript you can see that the element is coming outside and that is not what you want and same thing with this place so if you do insert like this things may not be so accurate so a way i found to fix this is to keep my insert at zero then i scale the element so i can do a transform scale for the x i started with 0 0.9 and for the y i started with 0 0.9 i think there should be a comma here right so this looks nice but then the space on the x is different from the space on the y so for the y i can give this 0 0.85 still not very accurate what about 0 0.8 now i know this is this is looking like a guessing game but this was really how i figured how to scale the element so if you come here you have space if you come here you have space you come here you have space it looks like the x is still bigger than the y let me make this 7 5 yeah this looks more accurate right so we have this and you have this and yeah that's about it and now if i should come here and let's say i have third tabs and let's say this one has four items then i can come here to repeat the same idea if this was a shared component like you would have in react you won't be repeating yourself this much is because we're doing vanilla javascript here so i can call this third tabs yeah third tabs and then i can say third tab elements and this is going to be third tabs and by simply doing this we're now going to have this four oops i'm clicking this but it's not working oh i forgot to do this handle active switch okay so if we go now see react javascript css html and you can see that the size of the tabs because in our css we did it here times count you can see that the tabs scales accordingly and now you have this you have this for two and you have this for three as things get smaller you definitely want to start thinking of responsiveness probably reducing the text size or instead of having everything as horizontal you want to have it vertical i hope that you enjoyed this demo and you 
you have been able to learn about the Hasudo class. The Hasudo class is one of my favorite features of CSS. And there are many more features that you can also begin using in 2024. I have a video where I cover 10 of those features, which are mostly my favorites. You should see the video currently on the screen. You can definitely check it out. And if you'd also love to know how Jay accomplished this switching with the checked pseudo class, I also have a video on that. You should see it on the screen. You can check it out. Please give this video a like, share with others, and subscribe for more CSS tutorials like this.